H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so I'll quickly review, uh, revise what are the topics we discussed so far uh, from class one. So we started with uh, the first program like writing C-sharp program and structure of C-sharp program and uh, hello world C-sharp program in the first class. And then we saw how to compile and execute C-sharp program without using Visual Studio. So we compiled it using CSC compiler and we saw that when you compile an exe file will be created and that exe file can be executed. So and we also saw what is the use of Visual Studio. So using Visual Studio, uh, you can code very quickly. You don't need to remember the f uh, spellings or Visual Studio will have IntelliSense. So when you put dot, it will show you all the methods available for a class or so. So that is the reason why we go for Visual Studio for better productivity. And uh, we also saw like what are the data types we have in C Sharp. And so we saw like int, float, double, decimal, like we saw all the data types. And we also saw uh, what is the range for a uh, few data types and then we saw operators in C sharp so we discussed on like what are the different types of operators we have like we discussed on arithmetic operators relational operators logical operators um, and then assignment operators okay like that we s we have seen different types of operators and then we saw control structures in C sharp so we saw a for loop while loop and uh, do I like one of you uh, m said like we'll be explaining today I think it's SEMA and um, uh, and then we also discussed on um, conditional operator what is conditional operator so today uh, today we'll focus on um, types of variables so we have a value type and reference type and what is stack and what is heap concepts today we'll discuss on and then we'll get started with functions and arrays so so these are the topics for today and uh, so we also discussed on what what is number system and uh, what is memory units so we just we discussed this as well so we saw like how to convert binary to decimal and decimal to binary so we learned that and we also saw what are the memory units we have like uh, like byte bit and all we saw that and uh, we saw brief worry about .NET framework. So what is class library? What is base class library? What is .NET framework class library? So all the DLLs, all the DLLs which are present in the folder version 4.0, we call them as uh, .NET framework library. And we saw that a uh, few DLLs like uh, uh, like we saw system .dll or we saw system .web .dll. So all the names, all the DLLs are present in the folder version 4.0. Okay. So, so maybe we'll see this uh, CLR, CTS, MSIL, JIT. We'll see this uh, maybe today or, or in the next class. So for today we'll focus on for today we'll focus on types of variables, value type and reference type, and then and then we'll see stack and heap concepts, and then we'll see what is a function and uh, what is the use of functions, and then we'll also see what are arrays and how to declare an array and uh, what are the use of arrays. So this is the plan for today. So, so we'll get uh, we'll get started with uh, types of variables. Okay, okay. So now, so so we have two types of variables. One is value type, and the other one is the reference types. So now uh, we will see how we can differentiate uh, differentiate these value type and reference types. So let me open Notepad. And then, so so now we have two types of uh, data types this is very important so this is the topic which normally uh, normally will be focused on interviews so you should be very clear in this you should be very very clear in this uh, value types and reference types so please focus on the class so so now so we have two types of data types value types and reference types okay 
so now all the normal basic data types all the basic data types which have fixed size or or categorized as value types so all the basic data types which have fixed size for example for example if you declare like int a or if you declare as float b um, so these variables will have fixed size of integer will have four bytes so float also will have four bytes so these variables will have fixed size in the memory so these are value types so so for example for example if i declare like this assume that i'm declaring int a is equal to 5 and then assume that i'm declaring int b is equal to um, b is equal to 8.8 f or whatever so i have declared like this and then i have declared here int in b is equal to 10 and then i have declared again int c is equal to 20 so i declared four variables total i have declared in a is equal to 5 b is equal to 10 c is equal to 20 and b is equal to 8.8 f so now if you want to understand how these are stored in the database so let me let me open an excel sheet so let's assume that uh, let's assume that my computer is uh, is very small uh, computer so i have uh, these are the uh, this is my uh, total size of my computer my computer memory unit so now let's assume that each cell so just a second let's assume that each cell uh, if of the area which is selected is one byte so each cell is one byte and this is my this is my total computer memory space which i have uh, which i have selected so i'm just uh, reducing the width of it so that now okay now assume that the total uh, the total size of my computer is only this much so let me copy this and then let me put it in a word document so that it will be a bit clear okay so i'm just opening it so let me do one thing so page layout and orientation let me make it as landscape okay so now what i was telling here is let let me assume that this is my computer's memory unit so now just a second okay so now now if i have declared variables like this for example so i have declared variables like this so a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 10 like this i have declared my variables so in that case uh, the memory will be allocated this way so let's assume that each box is of one byte so each each small box is of one byte so what happens is if a is equal to 5 so okay just a second I'll, I'll i'll make it so that we can see both the windows at the same time okay okay so the moment you declare a is equal to 5 so for the variable a four bytes will be allocated in the memory uh, because uh, the size of integer is four bytes so this four bytes so this four bytes whatever you are seeing here will be allocated for a so what i'll do is uh, so now this is what happened so only this cells i'm merging right okay so i don't know why it is increasing the width of okay so now let me see how it happens in excel sheet just a second okay so now I'll, I'll see how it happens in excel sheet okay so now uh, okay so here if i merge these four cells because integer a will take uh, will take four bytes so i'm assuming that each cell is one byte so if i merge it here so this one will be taken by a is equal to five so the variable a is holding holding five here which is taking four bytes so now i have declared here b is equal to 10 so b also needs four bytes so so here this next four bytes so each cell is one byte so next four bytes is taken by b is equal to 10 so now i'll format this i'll i'll actually do a merge cells so i'll merge it so now i'm giving b is equal to b is equal to 10 
so b uh, b will be holding value 10 in this 4 bytes so now again similarly similarly we have next 4 bytes so next 4 bytes let's assume that uh, we have one more here so so next 4 bytes will be taken by c so i'll do i'll do again similarly how i'm doing here so so match cells so i'm taking here c is equal to 10 and the last one which I have is float b is equal to 8.8f so float also as you know already it takes uh, it takes 4 bytes of memory so I'm just selecting so much cells so now I'm taking 8 uh, uh, this one let me give d so this one so d is equal to 8.8f now what happens when I write in the next line what happens when I write uh, when I write something like b is equal to 20 b is equal to 30 so do you think a uh, question to all of you do you think this 30 this 30 can be stored uh, in this 4 bytes all of you uh, do you think 30 can be stored in 4 bytes you can ping me in the chat window do you think 30 is enough to be stored in 4 bytes of memory yes 30 is enough in the 4 bytes of memory because because um, what is the range of even even if you take byte the range is 0 to 255 so definitely uh, an integer which takes 4 bytes of memory a, a very large number can be stored so every time when it when you change some value every time when you change some value here from 30 to 40 40 to 50 like that any value when you change the value will be stored in this location so now b value will become instead of 10 it will become 30 b value will become 30 so so for all the value types for all the value types every time every time when you change when you change the value that will be that will be fit in the same cell that will be that will be fit in the same location where your previous value is there okay so now now let let's assume like this so now now let me undo all this so so now I have something called here I have string name is equal to make I have a string here so I have a string name is equal to make so what happens so for every character in C sharp what is the memory you want every character in C sharp requires how many bytes yeah yeah so I'm seeing few responses so so every character requires how many bytes in C sharp so for those uh, I see a few wrong answers so every character in C sharp requires two bytes requires two bytes okay so so now just a second I'm seeing okay so I repeat again I repeat again integer requires 4 bytes short data type requires 2 bytes and float requires 4 bytes character requires 2 bytes in C sharp so so now if I declare like this for name what will be the size of this name variable what will be the size of total this name variable how many bytes please respond in the chat window so I have total three characters, three characters I have for this name variable. So what should be the size of this uh, this variable which has three characters? I want the response from all of you. Please respond in the chat window. So each character takes two bytes. So I have total three three characters. So what should be the size now? What should be the size of three bytes, three characters? yeah as simple as that okay so yeah it, it is so I have only three characters so it is six bytes not eight bytes so I have I have only three characters like I have M E G so now so if I have if I do like this if I do like this so for first first a is equal to 5 will be stored here 5 will be stored here and then next next uh, 
next uh, six bytes because for each character i need um, for each character i need two bytes so the next six bytes so one two three four five six so next six bytes will be uh, will be used by used by the string for storing meg so for storing meg so here if you see meg is stored here so now uh, let me now in the next in the next uh, b is equal to 10 will be stored here so let me let me do one thing here okay so now uh, b is equal to 10 will be stored here let me uh, let me format cells and then let me merge that in again so so here i have b is equal to 10 so now let's not uh, let's not worry about this now for this moment now now in the next line in the next line if i put if i put here uh, a is equal to 25 so again question so do you think i can change this instead of 5 so what happens a value will be changed to 25 so is 25 sufficient in this 4 bytes so when i change a is equal to 25 is 25 sufficient in this first uh, can 5 be replaced by 25 yes that will be replaced by 25 so so i can simply change here 25 now i am changing the name i'm changing the name is equal to i'm ch changing it to magnat now i have here meg and after this immediately i have 10 in the memory location now do you think this magnat is sufficient uh, to be stored in this instead of meg do you think i can type magnat now please respond do you think i can change this make to magnat now definitely not because what is the size which is required for storing magnat yeah so what is the size how, how much the memory you want to store uh, magnat how many bits we want yeah currently we want 16 bytes but currently uh, the name variable is only having three bytes so for that reason since we cannot change it uh, there is no way to change it because immediately next even i cannot write magnat here because uh, MEGA NADH because the immediate next space which is available here we don't have gap immediately we have 10 here b is equal to 10 even if if this is having some gap we can actually uh, MEG here a n a d h here we could have come till here so there is no way that i can change this data type so for that reason the designers c sharp designers have come up with have come up with uh, value types and reference types so all the variables uh, which can be stored uh, continuously from from here they constitute as value types and they are stored they they are called as they are stored in stack so stack is something like which is continuous memory from the beginning for example you can assume like this uh, so now so let me tell you this way so stack is something like if the variables are storing in this direction so we call it as stack from the beginning from the beginning of the memory location if the variables are getting stored so we call it as stack now in this case when i change make to make now since i'm not able to do it here so they came up with some other uh, idea saying like every cell in memory inside in computer hard disk like every cell will have will have a location address location for example this cell let's take that this 25 we is having four cells so this address location is for example take uh, take the address location as 1001 what could be the address location for this one for this cell where meg is starting what could be the ad address for this cell yeah it is it is actually 1005 yeah 1005 so now like this like this we'll have different address locations so let's assume that uh, let's assume that this cell is having this cell is having an address location of so i'll just highlight it this cell uh, which is highlighted in yellow color is having an address location of say for example 1052 okay so in this case what happens is make will not be stored here instead instead the address location of meg will be stored at 1005 so now now what happens is here it will take around one two three four let's assume that it is here so so this is here so so address of this location let's take like 1052 
so now this make will be stored from here to 1052 so m e g so m and since it takes two bytes e here and then g here so so this is how it will be stored in the memory location so this one uh, anyway let me let me try to merge it and then simplify it i'm not going to confuse it so now let me merge it so here meg will be stored so now in the actual value here here the address of this meg will be stored so what is the address of meg address of meg is 1052 so here 1052 will be stored now now so since now uh, now if the value of meg meg has been changed from meg to meg nad so now what happens is somewhere in the heap so somewhere in the memory location here here uh, meg nad will be stored so here m e g let's assume that this is two cells uh, m e g a n a d h so somewhere it will be stored and this address location say say for example the address location for this is uh, uh, sorry the address location for m e g a n a d h is let's assume that 1088 so in that case when i chain make to make nad in this place actual variable uh, name variable place this will be stored 1088 so so when i want to read the value of name so it will directly come from uh, so what happens is so it will come to here the actual variable he will be he will be will be there here name which is actually holding the address okay 1088 is there let me go to 1088 address location and then let me uh, let me get the value magna from here so this is what uh, this is what is from the back side you are coming here so this we call it as heap and this from the beginning if you are storing that we call it as stack okay so so this is about so why they are storing like this is because when you when you change the value of reference types the size is not fixed uh, so so since the size is not fixed and you cannot expand it because immediately you have some other variable so you cannot expand it here so in heap you will have a lot of free space so wherever available somewhere the value the name will be stored and immediately the address location the first address location will be stored here now again if i change magna to ravi or something if i change the make to ravi so immediately ravi will be stored somewhere here so assume ravi will be stored here and this address location say for example 1082 will be stored here 108 1089 or whatever 1092 will be stored here so in that way only address location will be stored in the variable uh, for for reference types so this is what we call it as a reference types for reference types they only they actually hold the location they don't they, the variable will hold the location the variable will not hold the actual value so i got a question this is when we declare where as reference type right uh, don't worry about where now uh, we'll discuss where keyword later okay so for now for now are you clear with what i have uh, what i have explained now why strings are reference types why strings are reference types please ping me in the chat window if you're clear if you're not clear just ping me i'll just i'll just give some brief explanation again why strings are reference types is it clear now i got one response others please respond in the chat window feel free if you are not if you're not clear so if it's changed to ravi memory location will be different yes yes if i change to ravi uh, ravi definitely this will not be stored here somewhere again ravi will be stored here so r a v i and and this this value uh, this address will be stored here yeah yeah right it actually stores address location it will not store the actual value Th that is the reason why yes strings are always reference types because if you try to store the actual value in that in variable when you change it again sometimes what happens that the value might be bigger than what the current value is so which will not be fit in the same memory location like how we saw meg is taking six, mm, six bytes but when i try to assign meg nad it will not be sufficient here i cannot store it here 
but when it comes to integer float or something the size is fixed forever integer size is 4 bytes so you as long as you change a to 5 10 15 100 or whatever it will be keep on changing in this location only but strings since the size is not fixed so we cannot actually store it uh, in the in the stack for that reason we'll store the actual value in the heap and we'll store the address location in the variable so address location name variable name will be holding the address location so if someone wants to retrieve the value which is there first they should go to variable and they should get the address location and then they should go to the actual address and they should get the actual value as soon as you modify this name is equal to make to make that this will be cleared from the memory this make will be cleared from the memory this will be free memory now okay so so that will become free memory and that will be deleted again this will be this will become free space available for heap so stack is so uh, this means space will be allocated for a variable as well as address location. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. This will have bit confusion. I uh, understand. So just blindly assume that, just blindly assume that value types will actually hold value types will actually hold the uh, the value of the variable. So variable will hold the actual value. See now, a will actually hold the value variable will hold the actual value but this variable will not hold make will actually hold the address location and then in the address uh, in the location of this address you will have the actual value ravi so just very simply you can think like in value types variable will hold the actual value in reference types variable will hold the address location and in that address location we'll have make how many of you are clear okay so in interview okay okay so in interview if someone ask you why strings are reference types can you give very good explanation so you went for an interview so the interview will ask you why strings are reference types can you give the explanation all of you yeah so one of you want me to uh, one of you wants to explain this for just 2 minutes for others for everyone why strings are reference types yeah so they will ask you why strings are made to store in the memory location then what is the answer so i got a response saying because strings are stored in some memory location so all variables are stored in memory location only uh, yeah because string values can differ even variable values can differ right a is equal to 5 a can become 10 a can become 25 so so you should tell this way so all the all the value types will store will will take fixed memory size so if someone asks you to explain you should be able to tell all the value types will will be having fixed memory size so even if i change the values if i change the values the variable uh, 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 the changed value can be sufficient can be stored in the same size but whereas if you come to strings and class objects when you change the values that values will not be sufficient in the previous memory which is there so in that case we cannot fit the changed value in the previous uh, previous variables location so in that case you have to change it uh, change it in some other location so that is the reason why strings are made reference types because when you are changing values the new value will not be sufficient in the previous value previous memory location is it clear enough so who wants to explain this so what if i change int a to float a you cannot change like that it will throw error so if you have int a and then you cannot write here float a you cannot write here like this because already int a already int a is declared then again you cannot declare float a here okay so i got a question saying what if i change int a to float a so so that this cannot happen you cannot have two variables also also 
okay in that case so first the question is first she declared as int a and then now she is modifying this to float a or she is modifying it to long so in that case what happens is every time when you when you change some uh, change some code you have to rebuild it in that case uh, in that case all the memory this complete memory will be, will be freed so when you change some code and rebuild it all the values will be gone from the memory and and freshly it will store so so that so that long a will actually take 8 bytes okay so when you change the code and when you try to rebuild it these values will not be there in the memory this will be freed from the memory okay so now uh, can one of you explain uh, can one of you explain why strings are reference types who want to take it up just orally like who wants to take it up i just want to see some different explanation than what i what i have given so who wants to take can can one of you please explain uh, why strings are reference types just for a minute who wants to take this up whatever you understood even if I, it could be wrong but uh, anyone so i see uh, i see a lot of you in the class today so yeah so who wants to take this up uh, so babita or bavik or padmini sandhya sarika siman sonal so just tell me why strings are reference types okay so sandhya wants to try it so so i'm just making sandhya as um, maybe i'll just unmute sandhya so you can just explain whatever you understood you can just give it a try yeah go ahead sandhya hello uh, sandhya i have just unmuted you but we are not able to hear you others are you able to hear sandhya okay yeah no one is yes uh hi sandhya we are not able to hear you okay it uh, looks like there is some problem with your microphone okay okay anyone else wants to take it up just tell me why strings are reference types So how about you uh, Bavik you want to take it up So you have to take it I mean you have to take this as an opportunity so so just got a chance to explain others so so if I were there definitely uh, definitely I would have told uh, I would uh, so yeah Bavik wants to take it up so so Bavik I have unmuted you Yeah, yeah, we are able to hear you. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, so, so basically, the string holds the value uh, as a byte, like uh, uh, whatever the name or the value you use that holds the uh, location of that value. And when you change, when you change the value, that Directs or that points to that particular uh, location. Perfect. And so, but in interview, if they ask you why they have designed like that, instead of storing actual value, why the designers have made you to store the location instead of storing the actual value? Why they have done like that? So, what is your answer then? Because string can hold. Uh, string can uh, vary that uh, value. Uh, right. Right. A bit more explanation. Yeah, you're right. Strings can vary the size. So, so if I was you, okay, yeah, you're right. Perfectly right. Okay, let's. Uh, so my question is. Um, yeah, Bavik said the explanation perfectly. So he said like uh, uh, strings actually the variable will hold the memory location. So whenever you change, whenever you change the value of a string, uh, so the new memory location will be stored in the variable. Perfectly right. So my question is, why the designers are designed 
like uh, strings should store the location address location instead of storing the actual value so for that you should sell you should tell this way so so I assume that I have a variable make in my in my string name so if I change it to make from make not so that make not I mean uh, string will not be sufficient will not string yeah string can be long enough hold that uh, value okay yeah you're right so uh, string make not will not be sufficient which cannot be stored in uh, in the same size which make is uh, storing so for that reason they made it as reference types so is it clear all of you so just think this way so if you're seeing my screen since here uh, since since here i have make here okay so now when I change it from make to make not which will not be sufficient here which will not be sufficient here so definitely definitely I want to store somewhere else so even uh, there is no way that I can increase make to make not here because this is already freezed so immediately next I have this so I cannot I cannot move this 10 to here and, and write make not here okay so for that reason they are actually storing the address location here and they are storing name somewhere in the heap so question to all of you performance wise getting the value of uh, getting uh, writing uh, reading or writing the value from value types is faster or reference type is faster which is faster value type or reference type so I see a uh, few telling value type value types are faster than reference type can you can you explain why you can unmute yourself and tell me why value types are faster. So, uh, Padmini, you want to say why value types are faster? So, I'm just unmuting you. Maybe you can tell. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, value types are faster because uh, when you do it, directly represents to the address where the value is stored directly. Correct. Else, in the reference type, uh, we we have to go to the uh, when we say uh, make, we'll uh, in the reference type uh, the address actually has the address pointing to the value. So we have to go to the address pointing to the value, and then we have the value stored stored there. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect explanation. Yeah. So you're right, uh, Padmini. Thank you very much. So so here, as as Padmini said. Uh, value types are faster because if I want to read the value of uh, what is there in A, A is equal to 20, A is equal to 5 or 25, directly I can come to A and see that okay 25 is there I can retrieve it. But when you when you go to reference type when I come directly to uh, when I come directly to get the value of make, make will not be stored there only 1072 will be stored. So so from this I have to I have to again go to 1072 I have to again uh, uh, go to this 1072 location and then I have to get the value whatever is there. So reference type is something like I'm doing double reference. I'm I'm coming to variable, I'm getting the location, and going to this location and getting the value. But value type is not like that. You can you can actually simply uh, read the value uh, from the location here. Now all of you do you agree? Value types are faster. Retrieving value types are faster than reference types. So. Yeah, so Sandhya and uh, uh, Sonal, do you agree with me why reference types are faster? Sandhya and Sonal? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get the response from... Okay. Uh, Sandhya, do you agree like value, value types are faster than reference types? Or you want me to explain again? Feel free uh, if you want me to explain again, definitely I can spend time and I will explain again. Okay. Okay. Uh, all variable values are uh, stored sequentially. Yes. So does it depend on size of the value as well? No, it will not depend on size of the value. Normally, as long as as long as if uh, if the size is fixed. For example, if you take a uh, float, double, decimal, long care all these things the size is fixed so so they will be they will be they will be stored in the stack only but but
B2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com.